discussion. Okay, great. Uh, so welcome everyone. Welcome to this session of importance of intellectual property in 5G and 6G. I'm your host, uh, Sanjay Kumar. I'm working with a company called as Telcolan. We are primarily into training and consulting related to the telecom technologies. Uh, we recently joined our hands with Hanoi where uh, you know, which is founded by Hargo and Bansar, which comes, he comes with around 15 years of experience with variety of different companies he has worked with. So his major skill set are around intellectual property, filing patents, and you know, getting those patents. So he has, you know, filed almost 100 plus patents, and many of those patents are used in uh, the, the actual commercial products. So he will talk a bit more about himself and the kind of things what he, what he has achieved in the recent past. So after working for Qualcomm for a longer period and then you know getting some uh, in decent amount of patents in his name, now he is providing training, consulting, uh, patent writing, uh, technical support, and 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 number of other things what he's doing. He will talk about all those things uh, on his behalf. Right. So I'll just hand it over this session to uh, Mr. Hargovind, and then he will take it up. And before uh, we, we we do that, uh, just a quick housekeeping rule. So we will be taking up the questions by the end of the session. So if this session will be around 50 minutes, and after that we will reserve 10 minutes for the question and answer. If you have any questions, you can drop those questions in the chat box. If not, we will uh, allow you to unmute yourself and then uh, you know ask those questions in the end of the session. The recording of this session will be uh, posted on our YouTube channel. I will be sharing the link of that YouTube channel in the chat box. If you wish to connect to me or Hargovin over LinkedIn, I will be sharing those links in the chat box so you can look at those links. So uh, Hargovin, over to you. I'm just making the presenter. You can share your screen and then uh, maybe continue with your discussion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone to join and uh, it's good to, to having this presentation before you. Uh, as Sanjay mentioned that uh, we are presenting all the intellectual property in 5G and 6G technology. So this is going to be very interesting for all of you as we are now you know, driving with the IP sword now. So, okay. So I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, Please yeah, let me know see. once you are able to see yeah, it. Yeah. Yes, hello, I mean, we are able to see your screen. Uh, if you want, you can start for a video a couple of minutes. And if not, that, that's pretty fine. That's so if you're comfortable, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. So I can do that. Just give me one minute. Uh, so guys, uh, before I start, let me introduce uh, my companies and noise India. So this company is uh, actually, we are driving with the 6G technology inventions along with the 5G uh, sorry, and we I, are I, trying I, to develop. Sorry, the... Harkovin, uh, have you stopped your presentation? Because I no, no, no. Yes. Yes, I, I'll do. I'll do. I just no trying to bring up something. No problem. That's all. Yeah, so this Hanoi India actually we are trying to uh, drive the innovations across the economy sectors, starting from technology, healthcare, agriculture, and other public areas as well. So this is the company who's uh, uh, trying to develop the innovations, you know, uh, commercial uh, uh, waves in India uh, through the different world. So, so let me uh, give you a short video of our uh, company who's. Uh, Harguinda, we are not able to see your screen and we can't even hear anything. Are you running something now? Harguinda, can you hear us? Yes. Are yes, I can hear you. Are you able to see it? No, we are There's not. Some even technical issues at my end. Just... 
we are not even able to see your screen. That's what I mentioned earlier. I hope it is visible now. Uh, it's just coming up here. Yes, we are able to see your screen now. Yeah. We can see the video, uh, but we can't hear anything. No problem. Yeah, no problem. That's all. Hmm. Okay, guys, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Please go ahead, Harun. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Sanjay. Thank you. Okay, guys, so um, uh, as uh, we are discussing today over the IP world. Our company, Handoix, is actually primarily dedicating towards the innovations across the economy sector, as you see in the short video. As we are helping the IPs innovations across the areas, starting from technology, which we are primarily focusing on the 6G uh, technology development across the areas, along with the healthcare, agriculture, and the public innovation as as well. So we had developed around more than 50 uh, patent applications we already filed across the areas. Hargovind, sorry to interrupt you. If you can remove this, uh, so stop sharing bar, hide, hide this bar, that will help us. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, agenda uh, for these presentations that we will going through is IP wall in telecom, different IP filing and the processes. That's very important that the many of you is looking at how the IP is filed, what are the different stages, what are these, you know, different options to filing the IPs how the uh, patent agent and the patent attorneys work in these processes, how the patent grants works and all. And after that, once the patent is granted, how it's going to be commercialized, what is the role of standard essential patents versus the normal patents. And then we will focusing on the high level of the 5G, 6G uh, areas of standard essential patents, especially. And then we will go over these uh, Hennoix uh, R&D division, which we are, we are, we are developing, uh, will show the developed innovations and our focusing areas so that. Okay, uh, so let's start with the intellectual property. So it's a word is very, you know, very famous word, intellectual property. Everyone looks about the IP, but IP, you know, what is this IP? IP is the, something, is a creation of mind, which could be in form of your inventions, literacy or artistic work, like you see your music or uh, any rhythm or something like that, any design, or maybe symbol names or images which you use in commerce, like you have seen the logos of any company or, you know, something, uh, uh, images or something which is uh, protected by uh, some designs so that is called the ip but generally we confuse with this term uh, let me give you a very simple example when you go for any property registration that's called the tangible property tangible asset so tangible asset is something which you can see which you can register on your name when you're going for uh, purchase any property which is land house or something any anything which you can touch that's called the tangible property and you may register it on your name if it is uh, for example if it is a uh, land then you go to the registration office you take the registration forum you fill it up and you take rights on your name by someone else who is selling it to you and that registration comes to your name so that is this belongs to you that's your property so that is called the tangible property but the intangible property is something which is coming from the mind which is novel unique and impacting the good number of people or so society or a, or, a, or a particular section of people that may impact that's called intellectual property right so that's a different tangible property versus individual, individual uh, sorry intangible property so uh, how the intangible property ip is protected because you see the tangible property like land or something which you can register physically in register office that you may receive uh, some documents which is on your name and you can claim your things so but how these ip register how you can claim the ownership on your name that's very important so that's what the comes uh, the types of the intellectual properties starting from patents trademark or copyright 
so patent trademark and copyright is little uh, you know differentiated like if we talk about the patents which is generally giving you your invention in your technical areas health or other uh, non technical areas as well which involve some kind of new ideas development which uh, impacting the something uh, new in technology right trademark is something uh, which is your like a particular symbol names or images which you want to keep on your name someone cannot use that logo images so that comes under the trademark so that is also the type of the intellectual property which is you making it uh, on your name copy i said it is kind of the literacy work artistic work or something which is uh, you know novel in that sen sense of that uh, artistic area that is called the copyright so these three basic type of intellectual properties are there for us the important part is patents but guys the important thing here is the revenue so i had seen the 97% of patent in the whole world doesn't make any single review you know this is a very interesting number so we should see the patent which does not earn money which does not impact the society as a whole or a group of sections it doesn't make sense right so ultimately our goal to getting the revenue generation from that patent that is the important part and that the intellectual property real definition so revenue generation comes from two way either through licensing or through ownership transfer it's a similar way as you have your property land or your house you are giving it to rent to someone so it is kind of the licensing part in in the patent form or if you are selling it to someone else uh, to getting some beneficial beneficial thing so that is called the ownership transfer so similar in the ip world if you are uh, licensing or you are giving some rental basis or some uh, um, giving it a, a non permanent base some uh, rights to someone that's called the licensing or if you are completely transferring the ownership to someone that is called your ownership transfer model so this is the basic uh, fundamental of intellectual property uh, which is little bit different of the the property which is intangible format so i hope uh, the basic fundamental aspects of this is very uh, clear at from this this slide okay so let's next move uh, let's move to next slide which we are talking about intellectual property impacting factors as i said you if your patent is not able to earn money if patent is not able to impact the society if its patent likely likelihood of use is very low then it doesn't make sense whether how much novel it is novelty is a prime part of a invention but it should followed by the likelihood of use the, the, the group of sections the group of uh, the society should be accepted to converting to the commercial use so that's what when you're talking about the intellectual property impacting factors the novelty likelihood of use and society impact how it is impacting to the normal life how the new experience we can gain from it how what is the benefit we are deriving from so this is the very important aspects when you're talking about the intellectual property you make sure your an acceptable high acceptance at the society then the second part once you keep this on your name like you got the patent right then it is very important to you know uh, uh, getting the infringement detections because you know you, you, if someone is uh, uh, trying to get hold or your physical property you know it's if someone is trying to get hold on that property you may register to complain to the police station or some agencies similar way how you know it's some properties your your uh, intellectual property is being used by someone else without informing you because now it's your rights you have the rights of all the legal things so on that property so the infringement ip detection is very important part so how the infringement will happen there's a different matters are there you have to make sure once you're writing the inventions you must make sure that how you can detect this invention uh, from in open mode uh, without knowing someone right so in some aspect the straight detection visibility is, is 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 the very simplest method some of the inventions are there they are very easily detect detectable from the third party uh, other one is the testing methods are there which can be in open loop because you can't go into the product of some other party and you know open that product and trying to see whether they are using their, their invention or not so this these your ideas must be able to test it with the open mode 
uh, method. So that is the second thing. And the design detection, that is another part. And other open tools are available, which uh, I can discuss later on that. But these are the four primary things which you can help uh, uh, to detect the infringement of your idea. That is very important because without knowing you, if someone using your idea, then you have the rights to, you know, uh, file a suit on, on, on that party, right? So this is uh, the second slide on that. And after that, you can lead the market on the IP once you keep your impacting factors on the high scale, infringement deductions also you are saving as an open mode and you are able to do that. So then you can lead the market in that, that technology or that ideas you are bringing up. Now, uh, coming to the patent types, it's very important uh, as many people ask me, uh, uh, like what are the different kind of patents? So in technology sectors, we would say in the very broad category, two kind of patents. It's one is the general patent and another one is the standardized patent. So standardized patents, are if many of you already from the telecom industry, you must know that standard is in the telecom standard is 3GPP, ITU they are deciding the standard for the technology coming uh, coming in the different releases of the 3gpp standards and that going to be implemented in the all devices of that technology so these are the two broad category of the patents we will discuss these standardized patents scp patents in detail in, in the later slides okay uh, so coming to the patent importance so uh, patent uh, is very important how it's good for uh, you know the beneficial of your organization success. So it is something that you are creating something new, which potentially impacting that technology, that area in the very, uh, you know, fair amount that is you are giving something new to the, to the, to the technology world. So that's what you are leading the technology. Suppose you're trying to optimize the power of, of, of a, of a device, of a feature, a certain amount, which is definitely a, a creating a, a big uh, boost to uh, device selling in the market. So that's, that's the importance you are creating and you must able to get the good revenue from all the technology uh, uh, seller of that device in the market. It also demonstrate your expertise in that technology, that area or that feature, that how good you are and you lead the, 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 that feature in the market. Of course, you will get the pref preferential treatment for that area because you are developing that technology, you are finding that ideas. So you are always, the you get the preferential treatment for that. And the most important part is the high revenue generation for your business. Because when you have working on any product and you are developing any new idea and that impacting the product in a high scale, whether this is this in maybe in the power optimization, timeline improvement, you know, a reduction of the size and, and, and many other areas, technical areas are there which may be improved by your invention then definitely it's going to be a big hit in the market and you may sell this idea to the other uh, technology device holders as well and you may get a very high revenue generation for that so ultimately we look for the revenue generation that as i said you your patent when you're drafting any patent you must look all the aspects whether my patent is novel how much likelihood of that idea in the in the society how much acceptable it is, what is the competitive other technology for it, and how I'm providing the benefits over that technology. Then only you should go ahead because these are the important parameters. They will ensure the success of your patent, of your idea. And then only you can sell this idea to the market and impact the society, impact the technology for it. Right? So uh, moving to the next slides, it's very important as now we were discussing about the patents, importance, patent types, and uh, the intellect properties uh, definitions and the basic fundamentals now actually when you decide that its idea is good this is a good patent it's impacting the society it is going to be a good likelihood of use in the market and it's good novel and offering a high features which would be acceptable to the wide audience so after that you have to decide okay let's file the patent for this and let's get the right ip rights uh, for that and we can get a business for that so so once you come to the this slides, you must know what the different patent applications are there. So the broad category of the patent applications are the provisional applications. Uh, second is the non-provisional applications. So uh, generally the people are confused with these two, the provisional application versus non-provisional applications. So as name itself indicate about the provisional application is something where you are putting a pre version of non-provisional applications. 
So non-provisional application is the actual patent application with the full claims and all the details of your inventions submitting to the patent office. But that non-provisional application looks all of the, your details, all technical details, your claims, everything. And it may take little longer time to drafting it because the more ne necessity of all of the kind of information in that application. The provisional application is something which is little, you know, the lower version of your non-provisional application, but this application is safeguarding of your inventions to getting the priority date. Priority days is the most important criteria to, to, uh, to get the IP rights because suppose you are filing your patent today. So you will get the today date from today date. You will getting that idea freeze for your name. Suppose someone else is filing the similar kind of idea one day ahead, then this idea will you are losing that the person who is getting the priority date before you he will be get the rights for that idea right so the provisional application importance is you may get the earlier priority date you may immediately draft the patent application in the rough format with a given described format and you can file it and save the rights for that applications so the provisional application takes a very low time to filing it but you can save the priority date which is very important for you later you can draft the non-provisional applications with more inventions, details, your more criteria, whatever you want to add additionally, that also you can add in the later stage of, of, of time, which would be filed as a non-provisional applications. So the timing is very important here. The provisional application you're filing, this is valid, valid for the one year time frame. So within one year time frame, you have to file the non-provisional application to the patent office of that respective country. So these are the two different uh, uh, applications. So I would suggest if someone is doing the research and they want to file the patent in, in a hurry, want to save their, 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 their patent or their idea, they must file the provisional application. Or if they are sure, okay, this is the final results and everything is okay, then file the non-provisional applications. Don't waste time to provisional applications, right? Because it takes money as well. If you are filing the provisional applications, then you have to give the money for, for drafting the application to the patent agent or the patent attorney. So, so you take the wise choice of filing the provisional application versus non-provisional applications. So after once you file the uh, applications, there is a various stages are there of patent uh, filing uh, after the uh, uh, you file the patent application, the various stages are there uh, before the patent are issued. Once the patent are issued, then it may be, uh, you may decide, uh, your attorney may decide to file a division application as well because it depends on number of claims because one patent application cannot hold some uh, threshold number of claims which depend country to country. And that's also giving you some money also like for example, but but the, the broad ways you may have a high number of uh, claims in a particular application also the area wise also they see which area you are trying to put a claim whether they're same area or you're trying to cover some other area as well in that application so that sometimes that conflict also comes so your patent attorney may decide to file a divisional application as well so you can say this is the second version or second part of your the patent application which has been issued so this is the high level things of this after that, uh, as you know, the patent is uh, is the territory territory rights. If you are filing in a country, so that valid for that country only. So if you are want to protect your invention to a different country to secure your business to that respective country, you must file an international application as well. So my suggestion is uh, rather than going to the different countries uh, to identifying your business, you must file the BIPO application because the BIPO application is some that application who protecting your filing rights to a different country around 190 countries are there which is uh, governed by the BIPO and you may file uh, the the your patent applications in these 190 uh, around countries later stage of time you may get around uh, one year is the uh, sorry overall 31 months with your priority date so you may have the uh, time duration to filing your patent application to the different countries within the 30, 31 months of your first priority date so that is the international filing importance because uh, when we filing a patent our patent doesn't make only for one country it may be 
hold business for the multiple countries based on what kind of patent you are writing. Generally, we write the patent for the different countries. Like we are uh, now, we are looking the China's uh, geographical location space, uh, US or Europe. We are looking the different issues. So we are developing the patent applications or ideas for solving the 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 local issues of that respective country so we are filing the patent to that country as well right so it's a territory right you have to see in which country that patent application should be filed so that is a very important aspect in which country you are going, going through to file as i was telling uh, i was telling about you the provisional versus non-provisional application so uh, i think i had already given the differences which i had mentioned in this slide uh, in the side as well now, uh, next slide should be IP uh, filing process and the timing. This is very important. So many of you is very interested to knowing about what is the process, what is the complete process of the patent applications filing till the patent is granted. So very first process start with the patent search. As I said you in the very first uh, present and uh, very first slide of this presentation that your idea must be novel. It should be unique. It should not be copy of some other idea. It should not be any duplicacy or something like that. Then only you can make, oh, my idea is novel. Now I will try to see how much benefit it is for the society or technology or particular sector. So patent search is something that patent attorney, patent agent or the related agency try to see whether your idea is already exist or your ideas related similar ideas already exist. Means your idea is patentable or not because if you are filing some idea which is already there in the market or already drafted by someone which has been published then this does not mean to filing patents so because the patent is the territory right but patent search is the global it should not exist anywhere in the world so the patents are started with the google's uh, patent search that's a very simplest way of searching the searching your uh, patent uh, uh, methods or ideas but the other different tools are there uh, which are some tools are paid or some tools are unpaid which try to give you the fair idea whether your idea is novelty factor how much whether this is patentable or not so this is a very important aspect i would suggest for any company any organization any institutes if they are going to file a patent just uh, hold that patent search before you filing the patent before you investing your money uh, to filing the patent which is little costly so you must search the patent you must go for the patent search uh, method to make sure your idea does not exist right so after that the filing decision comes once you uh, get to know that this idea is novel and this idea doesn't exist uh, in in the world and you may patent it next the filing decision comes in picture because the novelty is not only the factor First off, you have to make sure that idea is usable. How much your idea is impacting the, impacting the society, whether the group of people, the technology uh, market, they will ac accept your idea. How your competing technology are there, which can compete to your idea. How good you are. So these all are filing decision must happen in your technical board or the group of people, they having the expert people, they having knowledge of different sectors, they know. What are the competitive technology in the markets? So the filing decision for any organization, any company is the very, very important before you investing money to filing process. So this filing decision would happen. Uh, novelty, likelihood of use, acceptance, and the infringement detection as well. Because if you are having the good idea, novelty part is good, acceptance is good, but you are a company, you are selling your idea to someone. So your idea should be detectable also. If someone is using your idea and you are not able to find that someone is using your idea you can't claim it you must able to detect your idea without going into the product inside that is the very important aspect so once you are make sure that your idea is novel it's a acceptance to the wide audience it's a good infringement detection is very fair now you will 99 percent sure your idea is going to make a big hit in the market now you will come in the three percent category of the of the patent which will be the revenue generator because i said you with the statistics i had studied from the us and the europe agency the 97 percent of patent doesn't make money because they fail in these two sectors patent search and the filing decision they may be anyone i can't comment but yes these two are very important parameters or, or, or steps where you should make sure 99% you are sure your idea is going to make it get in the market. You're going to 
you know, transform the technology when we're going to transform the product which you are trying to invent something like that, right? So these are the very two important uh, factors, uh, very initial factors. If you are coming to the third step, now your 99% journey of your patent revenue generation are done. Only the 1% part is there. Okay, let's move to the next filing of the patent applications. Now you will see, okay, now go to the filing of the patent application. So you have to go to the right agency or firm who is filing the patents. If you are going in India or some particular country, you can go to the patent agent or patent agencies, they are filing the patent. Or if you're going to the international filing, then their local agent can help you to put that as well. Or you can may contact the various international agents as well. They are available in the market. Now they will suggest you and you can tell them the provision application versus non provision applications, right? So that's your choice. But I would say non provision applications because you had already patent search and filing decisions are done. Your idea is already good. So you go just directly with the non provision applications. So once they will file it, so the filing process, I think you need not to take care of it. There's a, there is a method of drafting the patent application where you will give in the certain, uh, you know, points where you have to draft the patent applications. Myself has drafted around 50 patent applications as a patent agent or patent attorney work I did myself. So I had developed the good practice of doing this patent drafting practice as well. So similarly, the, anyone can do that as well, but they have to be a rigorous efforts of writing the patent applications which is should be a unique uh, you know standard language generally we keep the us standard language which is acceptable across the countries so once your application is filed you will get the application filing number which you can keep safe with you then the publication request come the publication is a very important uh, uh, area uh, because it is going to the market like the the this particular assignee inventors are finding this and it is going to be public because if it is not going to public, how the ob objection will come? Maybe you are doing something which uh, someone uh, can claim this is my idea I already done or something like that. So that, that claim can come to that particular patent body, right? So that publication is very important. So, so any patent office uh, uh, public that uh, patent which has been filed before they examine that patent because they want to see if any objection come from anywhere. It's a similar like that when you are selling your property and uh, uh, you are putting a, you know, that advertisement that this property I'm saying, if anyone has any problem related to this, so please contact to this, so something like that. So this also happens in the IP world as, as well. So after the publication request made by your attend, uh, patent uh, agent or attorney, the publication of patent application will happen. That would be valid for a few months and the, 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 the patent office would see any objection comes then it will come for the patent examiner Then patent examinations will happen for that for the various cat criteria as i said you they also try to uh, visit of your every line of your patent every claim they try to see what actually this patent is whether this is novel how good it is how it is impacting the society any adverse impact on society various criteria are there for the patent office they go through that if the patent examiner have any doubt on anywhere they will send you the queries back to back to you back to your patent that's all needed this is the uh, examination points which you have to come back now it is similar like the uh, you know the lawyer your lawyer will write the response that is called the uh, first examination report will come that is called fer so your lawyer your patent agent should write the response for that if any doubt on any point right so that query will come then your uh, patent agent or patent lawyer will drop the uh the the response that response can be written format or can be in the verbally like verbally in the sense you will appear to the patent agent patent court and you will be submitting your your response verbally right or you may write uh, or submit it online there may be two way of modding of, of this that is there this process keep looping may keep looping because might be you submitting some response the examiner may query back to you then again you are submitting response the examiner may start in some some other process and he may what is this then it will come back to you so this will delay your patent granting right so that's what we tell the patent drafting is very important you write the every claim very cleanly and neatly it should be no any doubt to the examiner so he will make query for you so if your patent application draft drafting uh, a drafter is very good person who has done a lot of patent application drafting experience he this step may be reduced and your patent may be granted later earlier, right? So 
after that all all of them and examiner is satisfied okay everything is good and all of the criteria are satisfied then you patent is granted right so this is the patent grant journey but in all of these step the timing is very important because as i said you this process may take a bit little time right and the publication request also um, uh, is very important because if you put the publication request little later it may delay your publication of patent applications, right? So timing is very important. So many people do not know what is happening, but you must know about it. Like there's an early request options are there. You can put early publication request. You can put early examination request. It will be prioritize your patent applications to the patent office, but just you need to pay some additional fee for, for this. Okay, so this is the complete IP filing processes and, and the timing I, I told about you. Okay, now some key information for the patent drafting, which is maybe very important for you as uh, some of the terminologies are there. Like first terminology is patent agent versus patent attorney. So patent agent and the patent attorney are two different things. The key difference between the patent attorney and patent agent is the patent attorney or the licensed lawyer is a is the lawyer who has done your law degree and uh, has been a part of the member of the bar counseling of that state it's a simple lawyer okay and he has a knowledge of patent as well the patent agent is the specific technical person or any person who has some technical degree okay and he, he has to pass a patent agent exam which is conducted by the government of india or any respective countries uh, uh, organizations for a particular patent kind of information. So patent agent is not actual lawyer, but he's good enough in the patent filing, drafting, preparing and presenting to the uh, uh, to the patent court. And patent attorney who can take the legal action, you can give you the legal advice, right? Patent agent cannot give you the legal advice, like for infringement, like for your uh, filing your law suit case for against any company patent. So patent attorney can help in that. Patent agent can't do that. Patent agent only can help you the filing the patent application and presenting to the patent office. But patent attorney can do everything, right? So here the two different important uh, definitions uh, uh, are here. Claim writing, as I told you, the claim writing is very important because when we talk about the claim, these are the important part of your patent application where examiner put your eyes very cleanly. Because the claim that there, which you are putting the novelty or the basic idea of your invention, they are not going to read everything. It's maybe background or a lot of information are there, which may be that not much necessary. That was the claim is very important. That's what your back to back uh, first filing report, examination request, response. These keep coming in loop because if your claims are not good enough and they're having any doubt in the claims, then this will delay your patent processing and it may take years. You, you have seen some patents grant heaven in the two years or three years. Some patent may take five years as well because of this, this process. It may delay your patent process. So you must choose a patent agent. Patent at all is a very good one who can provide a very clean uh, and very objectively uh, uh, the claims, independent versus dependent claims. So dependent versus independent claims are very important when you are writing the applications. And uh, some countries setting the limits for the dependent claims versus the, uh, you know, against the each independent claims, right? So that is also very important. You must see uh, when you're writing your inventions, you must see how much claims you're putting and how many independent versus dependent claims. Because if it is exceeding, your patent cost will going up. Second, your patent might not get the complete patent grant and you may have to file the divisional application later point of time, which again will delay two to three years of your patent application. So you must show whether your dependent versus independent claims are good enough to survive to that applications. If it is exceeding or something, you definitely file a separate application. Don't wait to grant the patent and then you file a division applications. So that's the very important aspects to, to take care of it. Now, uh, coming back to the uh, patent, types in the technology world. So uh, as I said you in the earlier stage, like two type of patents are there, general patent and the standardized patent in the technology in the telecom parts. 
So here you can see uh, in the patent type in the telecom, maybe two type technical patent and non technical patent. So technical patent where we need a good technical information and so non technical patent any any normal person can also do like when we see the torch uh, in your mobile phone what it's just non technical one right but it is coming with your mobile phone so this is a non technical area but this is making a big difference in 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 the telecom sector when you having the, your torch in your mobile itself similarly when you many ideas there which may be non technical but we will focus on the technical side in the technical side uh, two uh, uh, ideas are there two kind of patents are there uh, standard essential patent and non standard essential patents so standard essential patent which are you know a global acceptance and getting the space and able to get space in your uh, specification of the technology like in the telecom with the 3gpp specification which are the standard specifications uh, protocol design which all the uh, manufacturers all the device holder has to follow so that's the standard patent and non-standard patents may be your network specific your device specific or something else which doesn't impact these specifications they're not getting space in the specification and they're not uh, you know uh, uh, getting the any essentiality to adding by all these uh, vendors in their devices which are using this technology so that's what the importance of the standard essential patents is very high so uh, before we get this standard based basic definitions let me introduce you the standard generation for the technology for the wireless communication which started from first generation to the now we are talking about the sixth generation so these are the generations of uh, 1G, 2, 6G, 5G, and the 6G we are talking about, which would be in around 2030. So these are the high level of telecommunication generations. And these are the specific, the 3GPP, uh, which I was talking about the standard specifications. So these are the 3GPP names where the standard are mentioned for, for, for the technology, which a standard protocol design or methods or kind of the protocols, which has to follow by all the vendors using that technology. Again, coming back to the standard essential patents, as I said, use of very high revenue generations, even the billion dollar generation for standard essential patent, because the standard essential patent going into the specification and the specification being used by all over the world. This is a mandate. So now you can see if everyone, mostly everyone, if using your idea in their devices, how much you can expect, expect your revenue, right? So that's what the standard essential patent is very important. That's why our company also focusing on the standard essential patents, which is having the wide audience, wide users in the, in the, in the market. Okay, so when we talk about these standards, I was talking about the 3GPP, right? So 3GPP is a main central body. You can see here, I, a rough diagram is here. 3GPP is the third generation partnership project which having the organization members and uh, the organization partner members as well for different countries they have decided the seven partners are there. Uh, let me show you a little detail here. So these are the partners are here, China, EU, Japan, Korea, North America and T our TSTSI. So we are engaged with the TSTSI. So if you having the standard essential patent, so this is the first body, uh, you get entry to the 3GPP. So these are the organization partners. They are getting, uh, they are uh, inputting to the 3GBP for these ideas developed from these respective agencies. But the members of the 3GBPs are from different countries, companies, they're getting as an individual member or as a partner members are there. And uh, not only these organization partners or members, but also the other uh, relevant uh, agencies also providing the requirement and the input to the 3GBP. As you can see, different agencies are there, like COAI from India, I think you know these operator association so they are also giving their recommendations to the ggpp based on their requirement operator may have their own requirement for a particular area based on their geography requirement the people density you know uh, the geographical conditions weather conditions multiple uh, factors are there for a particular country area that should be inputted to the 3gpp to consider uh, to implementing uh, the standard protocols which is going to be implemented across the globe. So uh, this is like that. For mobile application, they also having the cross-reference cross for the 3GP because they also running the application over the mobile, right? So they also make sure that nothing should be conflict with the 3GPP because everything is running on, on a mobile devices. Similarly, the internet protocols also, uh, also having the referring these specs as well. 
nothing conflict should be there. So the every standard agencies also is collaborating or kind of referring to each other to avoid the conflict, right? So that's the 3GPP roles coming in the in the picture. But you see the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union is there as the big agency who's you know doing the big business of uh, collecting the requirement across the globe. And uh, they are trying to bring up like what should be the next technology standard in the world? What are the different requirements for the different countries from the different territory regions? They are sitting and trying to see what should be our world for the technology in the next five years. Right for the city, uh, recently, uh, sometime back, that uh, conference was held at, uh, for the ITU uh, from our, our Indian members also uh, joined there, our Bharat CG Alliance Director General. Uh, Rajesh Patanji also joined and represented India from here. So that's uh, that the big people uh, from the different country uh, representing their country, providing the inputs, collecting the inputs from their local references, operators, or the other manufacturers, so that a, a common um, uh, uh, environment can be created for the ultimate requirement for that next technology. And these are driven by under IMT requirements. Now, IMT 2030 is, is the standards are maintained, uh, uh, generated for these uh, called for the CG technology. And they are inputting these to the 3GPP. So, 3GPP is a central body who is responsible for collecting the requirements, working bodies, working groups, study groups. And then, of course, the implementation also is happening. So this is the complete specification pictures, right? So that's all the specification. So if you think about the 3GPP modes, it's an international collaboration between the uh, telecommunication standard development organization, like that. Or if you talk about these specifications, you know, the different tele protocol structures are there, uh, layers are there, RRC, MAC, RF, RLC, PDCP, NAS. And they have the relevant 3GPP standard specifications. So they are mapping to these standard specification to developing the new new protocols, right? So our Hendrix has focused on these layers. We have developed so many innovations. So 5G advance and the 6G target, 6G uh, uh, target as well. So so ultimately uh, the SAP importance for an organization is global acceptance of your solutions, very high revenue, market leadership in the technology is the very high revenue generator for you. So that's why we should focus on the standard essential patent. So a standard essential patents, there is a three different bodies are there under the CGPP RAN, which is driven over these RAN interface, like between your devices, your over wireless nodes. CT is the core terminal, and the SA is the service aspect for your services specific uh, protocol design structure and ideas are there. Okay, so as I said you about the CGPP st standard specification works along with the collaboration with the ITU. Uh, with requirement collections, implementations, and specification creations. So these are the high-level picture of your spe specifications, like we mentioned, like this physical layer, second uh, RAN2, working group 2, WG3, different structures are there. So we are working around these, developing the 6G standard for these, along with the current 5G advanced structure as, as well. Now coming to the last slide, so sorry, the last few slides are there for our inventions that we have done or more than 50 inventions protected by the patent applications. And majorly we are dealing with the 6G standardization and the OEM local solution as well, because sometimes the 6G standardization or 5G uh, advanced standardization may take longer duration because it has to go through many bodies, many acceptance, and might be uh, some uh, voting problems, they might not get accepted at some point. So we should ready with the local solution as well because many operators are interested to solving their problem at the local level. So we are done with the local solutions, 6G standardization solutions, 5G advanced solutions, and the multiple solutions we had patented application filed in this different area, mainly in the 6G energy savings, radio resource management in 6G, spectrum sharing and sensing, mobility design. Also, we are finding the application of the 6G in the various areas like public, agriculture, and healthcare, which we have protected through the applications so our mostly of the inventions are targeting to these uh, specifications which are 5g specification and we are targeted for the relevant 6g specification as well so our team r d team is going the very deeper 3gpp specification is study of the current releases anticipating 6g issues with technical evaluation and the algorithm rf hardware design development for 6g and we are studying all of the hardware designs rf designs across the globe and we're trying to see where this we can fit it, our inventions to giving the more important power saving resource saving rf resource saving radio resource saving you know and timing improvements that is our most important criteria to design the invention that can leave the market in the future 
The second is we are closely analyzing the field issues of the various geographical location as well across the globe and trying to see the different geographical condition, weather condition, what could be the anticipated problem in the existing the 6G, 5G, 4G together. So that also giving us the multiple things here. So these are the high level of areas where we studied upon and based on that we have created the multiple issues. And mainly is the US, China, Japan, Taiwan, Korea and the European region we are concentrating with India focusing. So uh, the 6G standard solutions highly, the 6G RF design, AIML, mobility design, SON MDT, spectrum sharing and sensing, and XR, VR, and now we are looking quantum communication also, uh, also we started uh, hiring the good people here. And the services feature, which is your MES, Bolt, sorry, voice over NR similarly, like maybe in the future something, maybe voice over 6G, but this is something little bit tricky, how it will happen. So we are trying to see uh, what would be the possible solutions about that and what we can implement and what we can deliver as an invention solution for that area as well. So in the RF sites, we have been the robust RF design hardware algorithm, ultimately the optimizing the RF operations in the multiple ways. And uh, RF deeper study of some millimeter wave and associated feature, because that is very important when you are dealing with the some millimeter waves or the, the waves which are upper frequency side. So that's very important how you deal these problems in your device and what could be the interference problem may come, how you deal this, what, what should be the protocol design to dealing such kind of issues in the future. And, and also especially for the different uh, requirement of the different people, like India people might have the different requirement because they always look money. Because in, in, if you go to the place, they might look for money rather than the performance. So we should look for all the aspects where what solution can be fitted. So we are looking from that angle across the geographical locations, people requirement, market requirement, environmental requirement and the country requirement then only we can fit in in the in the best way in the in the three percent of that mobility architecture protocol for 6g we are trying to design the new mobility architecture which is completely dif maybe different so that it may be a risk for us but we had done with multiple solutions for that ideas optimize the new hardware and software design for the radio resource utilization because the future the radio resources are very limited very important because we have different kind of radio sources available and we have to be pretty big wise choice to see how optimize uh, uh, application may be designed to use these solutions very effectively. So that's very important. Spectrum sensing also, we had done these different location issues. Uh, we had seen as we see different uh, areas based on the spectrum uses, you know, their penetrations, frequency, different frequencies, they are they're having their different uh, uh, characterizations. So multiple things are there where we try to see how the spectrum sensing can make an impact with our solution. So that also we are we are doing. AIML is something that we are keeping a very big area where we are trying to implement this majority of areas, trying to see how optimal algorithm may be designed by uh, on on the different areas. So that's very important. So on MDT, it's a new architecture we are trying to develop in the for the 6G environment, which may give an awesome experience, and we are trying to duplicate the, the this old structure. This may be a big hit for us, but we are trying to see how it may be implemented. It's maybe a tough, but we had come up with different, uh, you know, variant solutions to make the acceptance at least to a different geographical location. So that's very important to us. Coming to the OM solutions, so we have the multiple power solutions, features, mobility, internal flow design, data collection techniques, spectrum planning and voice broadcasting feature and the other areas as well. So these all are the 6G based and 5G advanced based as well because we are trying to see in the current technology also what improvement can be done. It's not for a standard, uh, but at least for the OEM basis it can be done because OEM would be running for the 5G for the longer duration. So they're definitely looking how the power optimization can be done for me. Right. In the many countries, 5G is still not there. So when the 5G will come, they would be saying, Are you, my power is going for two hours. It should be for more hours, three hours, something like that. Similarly, for the network, network operator also looking the very power hungry, right? So they might also see the, how the power can be saved, how the resource can be saved. So 5G advance is also a big choice to us for the OEM based solutions. So we are designing that solutions as well. So yeah, so this is our uh, our 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 world of Hanoix where we are developing the different innovations, standards, station patents and all. And I, have, I hope you like the uh, uh, knowledge of this sessions and you may write uh, to me for any queries, any questions later to stage also. But I, I invite you here and before I invite you questions, let me play uh, the video of our company, which I was talking about.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, adding one more thing, uh, we Govind. are in the yeah. process of. Yeah, yeah thanks, Har Govind, for the bandhu yeah. session. So be, right. so, yeah, yeah, please go ahead, please go ahead. You complete first and then I'll speak. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, so Sanjay, just one minute. So I was telling what we are in the process of developing the SIGG innovation labs in India, and also we are looking the opportunity out of India also to establish our SIGG, uh, CGPP Eastern Division Lab. Uh, so any uh, partners, companies, or institutes with having the good uh, talent, uh, we offer the uh, uh, the collaborations for, for them. So that is my last. Okay, any uh, anything else, any questions, uh, I invite any query, any questions. So, uh, I think Hargovind, what we'll do is we'll first take a few questions from the chat box and then uh, maybe if there are more questions, we can take those questions as well. So, there are multiple questions from Carlo. He's like uh, a regular, you know, follower of our session from Mexico. So, uh, like the first question is, how do you really manage shared versus known shared IPRs with other companies? Is it freely shared or is there a common pool of IP for everyone to access? Alternatively, do companies sell or uh, charge for access to that IP? So there are some shared IPs, right? So how do really companies manage those IPs? Uh, uh, okay, uh, thanks for this question. It's a very nice question. So uh, till now, we did not share any IP uh, because we are in the process of the publication of these application, as I said. So mm -hmm. before publishing, uh, we are not uh, uh, addressing it to the to the wide audience. But yes, we are uh, trying to develop a method, a mechanism by which we can distinguish the shared IPs versus non-shared IPs in some limited uh, access amount, right? It could be a. Uh, I mean to say, uh, we would try to give the access to the all the people who can understand the IP objective intent, not the actual design or the protocol aspects. So that is our local uh, technical body we are designing to decide how the sharing IPs uh, can be, uh, you know, keep on, 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 the, on the particular server to give the access to, the, to the, all the audience. So, so it is yeah. in plan, but now mm -hmm. we did not share any IP because we are in the publication format. Uh, publication form. No, I think now. the question was not related to you. It was in general when when companies are creating a shared IP, right? So now how do we really share it? So mm -hmm. they have some kind of uh, you know percentage by sharing or some feature by sharing. How how do they really create the shared IP? That that was his question, I believe. Yeah. So so this is uh, this generally uh, Sanjay belongs to the feature wise because and uh, the objective of that and the feature wise so shared uh, ips mean you are giving some 20 to 30 percent of overall idea of that ip which could be mm -hmm. shareable so that it's enough to the to to the recipient that yeah okay this is the this is the idea this is the problem and this is the solution if that solution and the idea it if it is going to hit or giving some benefit to that party they may come uh, and they can uh, show their interest so it depends company to company how they are uh, putting to the share percentage because it's so their I, choice I, or their I, portfolios. So there is no thumb rule to design that it typically depends on the parties, how they really want to share and then they have to create a internal agreements to, you know, take care of. Yes. It, correct. Okay. Uh, yes. So the another question yes. is, I, I, I remember that you have covered some international part of it where, you know, VoIP or something was there. So, but the discussion what we had is more about the international or uh, like it is more applicable to India. The things what we have discussed here. No. So, BIPO application is uh, actually the international uh, application which is filed at the WO. So, that covers around 190 countries as I said. So, mm -hmm. uh, India application you, you can file separately and BIPO application you can file, file separately. And if you file the BIPO application all, uh, uh, in, in the first attempt, you need not to file the India because India uh, falls in the BIPO automatically. So BIPO mm -hmm. is the collective uh, entity having of 192 countries. But uh, you have to file your patent application in every country separately. The BIPO only give you the time limit, like 31 mm -hmm. months, as I said you. So BIPO, mm -hmm. if you're filing the BIPO application, it gives you the 30 months period to filing your choice of your international application in different countries. If you're okay. filing in a particular country, that is valid only for one year. But BIPO is giving you 30, 31, 31 month of window to filing to okay. these 190 countries. Great. Uh, so, so another question is, uh, there is a question from Amit, right? So, you know, people who are looking for some support on, you know, filing patents, uh, 
or maybe you know getting a little more, bit more awareness about it how hanoix can support them right so uh, what kind of services you can provide to the people who are looking for filing patents uh, that was his question yeah so sanjay actually the filing patents generally uh, as of now that is not in our portfolio we are not providing support to, to drafting the application to the uh, to the uh, to the parties we can assist uh, to uh, to uh, research we can assist to new uh, innovation activities uh, later we may planning to set up a separate department for the ip filing drafting also but as of now uh, we do not have the department to help in drafting the applications but we can assist to uh, uh, you know for finding the innovations research. how to do the innovation yes research mm -hmm. research yes. Fund, research support right. research awesome. consultancy for the cg yep. Right. Uh, another question is everyone is talking about AI ML solutions for telecom, right? Uh, but, but the question is, how will you have access to the real telecom data? So let's say if you if you want to train our models, uh, I just give you a very interesting uh, story from yesterday's discussion. We were talking, uh, we were speaking with one of the leading research, uh, telecom research company. They, they say, okay, we want to build a LLM from scratch and we want a training on that. We're being a training uh, company, normally people come us to come to us for training program. They mentioned that, okay, we want to build a LLM from scratch. But, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I, of course, I'm not an expert into that area. So I spoke to someone who can do that kind of provide kind of that kind of service or at least have some understanding about it. He says building an LLM from scratch will cost you $50 million, right? And if you were expecting that to mm -hmm. have in a training program, that that's really not justified. It's not possible, right? So, so the question and this question also resonates with my discussion, which Prakash has asked. He says, how do if I have to train my models, right? Uh, uh, right. So I, I also remember that recently there was a uh, alliance formed, which is called a GTA, right? GTA, which is a leading operators and OEMs are coming together to create LLMs in various languages, right? And, and that's that's really massive massive effort. So how if I have to train my AI ML models, how I'm uh, going to get the access to the real telecom data, right? So uh, if you are filing some AI ML related uh, patents, right? So how do you really get the real telecom data? Uh, Prakash, uh, please feel free to you know elaborate on the question if I'm speaking it in a wrong way. Yeah, but I think that that's uh, that's what I can get from the question. Sanjay, uh, actually, see. Uh especially for the AI ML based design. Uh, if you're asking me to writing or uh, doing it in the real telecom world. So as of now, we do not have that facility to doing it. So, so okay. now we are in the designing. Now we are working with the designing part of the algorithm. The second mm -hmm. part as what you are saying to uh, do not LLM creation or training models or mapping to the real data, but that is the, that is the secondary part. Once this, all of these, uh, you know, design part are done and your patents are ready for that, then you are converting it to the real data, right? So that is a completely a separate department. So if you are trying to bring up our research and innovation department, that is what is NOX have, RNI department, that's a completely the designing of the algorithm simulation point of view. We are not uh, uh, testing as of now with the real data. Now we are looking uh, the partners who can help us in that process because we have a lot many uh, EIML designs and algorithm we are in the process of developing. Now, how they can be converting to the real time applications or real time data mapping that is yet to be set up a department by us. So as of now, we do not have the department to do to, to yeah. real time telecom data conversion. Yeah, I, 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 and especially I, I, for SIGG, especially yeah, I, for SIGG, if I'm talking about, so uh, yeah, please. I completely agree and understand because it's not possible to do everything. And so you are trying to concentrate on few other things. And so another question from Pankaj, uh, and you know, it's another three, two, three interesting questions. The first question is, can individual file tell, uh, patents? The answer is, of course, yes. If yes, what would be the course process to be followed? Like uh, just a high level information, how they can do it? What is the typical cost involved? Uh, what is the difference when somebody writes research paper and versus file patents? Uh, the third one is, uh, how do you really see this, uh, you know, SCP filing for a six G, right? Is it just started? Is it somewhere in the middle or, uh, you know, we are almost ending, uh, reaching to the end of the six G innovation thing. And uh, how, how long, because we are expecting six G to come in 2020, uh, in release 21, which is maybe somewhere around 28, 20, uh, 27, 28, uh, 20, uh, year 20, 27, 28, right? So, uh, 
what is the scope we have if we start working today uh, for filing some patents for 6G? What kind of scope we can see? So three question, what is related to the cost? The second one is research paper versus file, filing patent. What is the difference? The third one is how is the 6G innovation race going on in the world? Okay, okay. So first uh, uh, answer is yes, individual can file a patent. And as far as the cost concern, it depends on the various stages because when you file a patent, you have to choose the patent agent and they can charge you for filing a patent application and the patent search, as I mentioned, the two step, it could be go up to two lakhs per patent, two lakhs. Uh -huh. It could be more than that also. But at this, this is just a first step for your filing of patent. After that, when you are going to publication request, examination request and the patent grant, that is the diff diff different costs are, are there. So when uh, you got the, uh, you know, queries from your examinations uh, to filing a response, then also your lawyer will charge you some 50,000 per widget to, to court. So uh, if you see your, your uh, individual may start may, uh, in the very beginning phase of filing a patent application will start from around 2 lakhs rupees and it may go up to 10 lakh or 20 lakh or per patent. Uh, for mm -hmm. one country, as what I know, if you're filing this patent to different country, then you're, of course, your charges are a little higher. If you're going to file in the US, then their different application fees are there. They also go to initial stage 5 to 10 lakhs for the filing and rest the law lawyer charges for 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, per lakh, per lakh widget. That depends upon their, their credibility or kind of the agency you are talking about. So, yes, it is a little bit of costly. Uh, but you may start it with two lakhs per patent average in India for the initial okay. stage of filing of the patent. Mm -hmm. Second question, you asked me about the, the writing a research well, paper research versus the patent application. So, yeah, filing. yeah, yeah filing application, right? So, so research paper is something that you are. Uh, it's it's kind of the publication you are putting some research to the publication magazine or somewhere. So it goes in the open source mode means it is not protected actually you are writing your research in some papers so it may be published in some magazines or it may be accepted some forum but that is an open source so it is not protected by writing a patent application you are protecting the rights of that research on your name right so that is the difference between the research paper versus mm -hmm. the patent application but 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 the research paper may be very good it does not require likelihood of use or something the criteria which patent application needs right so research paper may be a good choice when you are not sure that this how much uh, impact of or technology or how much the wide acceptance of this research makes sense because research is something that's uh, your efforts you're putting efforts and that efforts is coming uh, giving some useful results right in one direction might be the another researcher, maybe some give another fruits. So when all the research comes together, then it can become a standard patent, right? So research is good. You may get recognition from research because you're putting in, uh, you're putting in good efforts. But when you are make sure that your complete research can make a complete product or a feature or very benefit aspects, then you must go for the patent application because it will save the rights of, of your in, invention. So that is the difference between the research. Both are good, but depends how you are taking it, what kind of quality, I would say quality is good of research paper, of course, but how much contain it is, which is able to uh, uh, converting to the patent uh, rights, right? So that is very important. So that is right. the answer for the second question. Third third question you asked me about uh, the SIGG innovations we are doing. And uh, you know, this is very, uh, uh, very good question because everyone will say Ki hume to abhi we don't know about the architecture of SIGG and you are writing the patent for SIGG. But mm -hmm. um, this is uh, something is very, uh, you know, confusing for the people because I say when we are doing for the 4G, you know, mm -hmm. so architecture wise things are same when uh, suppose handover ho hai to, this handover will happen in the 6G also, right? Data collection techniques will there, there would be in 6G also. The architecture may be same. Sometimes what happens ki, aap ki uh, we are designing a building to this place, but you are trying to decorating this building. You know mm -hmm. that this room may be a little bigger than what was the smaller room, but how my wall painting would be here? How much benefit I can take of this big room to decorating the things which could be more optimized power? How much big AC would be there? It may fetch this there. How is the RF frequency characterization for the some millimeter wave? They may give the issue to your RF current RF design. What could be the possible design for that? So saying ki, uh, uh, that's why we are saying now 5G will come in 6G. So we all are putting efforts, then the 5G will come. If we are thinking 5G will come in 2030, how feasible it is to write in the patent now, 
we are writing the patent that why the 2030 the 5g will come not me we are very small small people we are we are nothing even point zero but many people are doing writing the patent of 6g because they are looking the perspective for the future 2030 how the how the 6g rf will look like look like how the 6g rf spectral frequency would be interfering to the existing frequency how will deal with that frequency how the data collection technique may be more optimized with respect to the current data collection techniques because now we are limited with the 5g and the 4g but in the 6g there are going to be more beam oriented things how will deal that how could be the possible DC for multiple technical things are there so that are the very good areas where we can design the ideas suppose we design uh, 10 ideas if our one or two ideas are good you may think you may make a big difference why you are thinking that every idea will make a difference every idea can make a difference but maybe that little improvement needed at later stage of time but as of now the some portion of this may be good so uh, uh, i'm just uh, 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 starting that uh, five, uh, 6g research training as well and we are inviting the good uh, topper stud students from across the across the uh, india so what we are trying to tell them we are trying to see why these are the 6g frequencies in the future these are the we are collecting some data from from the big uh, telecom agencies that they are planning business now you see what could be the problem for this frequency what this frequency uh, characteristics what this frequency can create a problem and handover will happen what this frequency can create inside in the characterization of or your non-linearity of your of your rf how the rf resources can be saved if we are running with the 5g 6g so 6g is nothing 6g just we are increasing the frequency to get in the wider wider bandwidth now mm -hmm. what are the associated problems with the come with the 6g frequency that is that we are going to solve it otherwise nothing is different you will see the 6g would be same like 5g only the nodes name would be different the architecture would be different but the entire things would be same handover mm -hmm. will be there reselection would be there data transfer would be there similar power things will be there rf would be there the only thing is you are introducing the 6g rf there with the 5g 4g some millimeter millimeter lot of complexity will be there so the solving the complexity is the invention for the 6g standardization and also mm -hmm. we are looking at the different uh, countries also like china may have the may have the problem of the, the good density the, how the 6g may impact there how the 5g will be beneficial over 6g the, how we'll deal this in that environment that is a very important so working for the 6g is a very right time because we should not take the step when the technology is done we should take the step when technology is not done because we have the right chance to design something which may change the world and that's why i'm telling let's try to 6g innovations and try to lead the world by india Great. Uh, I think uh, I think we have just overshoot the time by 15 minutes. So I think if they have more questions, uh, you know, they can write it to info at telcoland.com or they can connect to you or me over LinkedIn. I've already shared all those links in the chat box. Right. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for going for one wonderful session. It was really fascinating and, you know, very interesting session. I personally liked it and I'm sure it was the same with the participants thank as well. You. The recording of this uh, session will be available on our YouTube channel. I've shared the link in the chat box. Otherwise, you can just search for Telcolan uh, YouTube channel. You will find it there. I've already shared the link of, uh, you know, LinkedIn profile of Harkovind as well as mine. Feel free to connect to uh, me or Harkovind. You can visit our web website for more information. So I think thanks for joining in and I hope you enjoyed the session. If you liked it, please give the, give us a thumbs up on LinkedIn uh, uh, if you are connected to us on LinkedIn already. If not, uh, please feel free to connect to us and we can surely discuss more things about it. Yeah, thanks, Argovind. Uh, have a great weekend. And I hope... Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, everyone, to join this session. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Bye.